One new kind of blood test, still in development, will make it easier to detect bacterial infections. Other tests reveal tumors or thyroid conditions. Because medical innovations like these cost money, pharmaceutical companies are worried about the drug pricing debate. When an insured person goes to the pharmacy and buys a medication for 10 euros 40, we as manufacturers get 30 cents. The remaining 10 euros and 10 cents are divided among distributors, wholesalers, pharmacies, and the state, which gets the value added tax. Germany's health minister wants to do something about drug prices. Philip Rössler says the 30 billion euros German insurance companies spent on medications last year is too much. His goal is to save 2 billion euros with no decrease in quality. We need innovation and we want new drugs to reach the market quickly. But we cannot accept letting the industry dictate the prices because that raises costs for patients. Under current rules, pharmaceutical companies are free to set their prices as they see fit, and insurance companies have to pay them. Under Rüstler's plan, industry and insurance companies would negotiate prices. The opposition Social Democrats say the plan is unrealistic. That won't work. No insurance company has enough clout, and the pharmaceutical companies know that. So they'll just go into negotiations with higher prices and let them be negotiated down to where they want them. Pharmaceutical companies like the idea, and they suggest that once a price has been agreed on with several insurance companies, that price should apply to all insurers. In addition, they want up to five years to complete the negotiations. Rössler wants the talks to go faster. We'll make sure the participants come to the table ready to make deals, because in addition to these medium to long-term measures, we want to apply mechanisms that take immediate effect, like price moratoriums and mandatory rebates. Pharmaceutical companies already give public health insurers a 6% mandatory rebate. The new proposals could more than double that. Plus, the companies will be required to demonstrate that new drugs are effective. The ruling conservatives even want to force drug makers to pay money back if their products turn out to be ineffective. What's important to us is to only pay for products that deliver demonstrable benefits. We want research and we want new medications which can, for instance, give cancer patients hope. But we want them only if they really are something new and better. We don't want to pay higher prices just because a few molecules have been rearranged. And that's why we need appropriate scientific studies. Effectiveness studies begin only after the medication goes on sale. By then, drug makers have invested an average of 12 years and up to a billion euros on R&D, investments they want to recoup as fast as possible. If you just look at AIDS patients in the last 10 years, new medications have extended their lives by 13 years, then we deserve credit. Or with multiple sclerosis and other conditions where people now have normal life expectancies despite these serious illnesses, then it's pharmaceutical companies who have accomplished that. But how is that supposed to work if you don't want to pay for it? Critics say they're willing to pay high prices for real innovations that actually deliver medical improvements. In Germany, however, other factors drive prices upward. A medication that's very expensive in Germany lifts prices all over Europe and elsewhere. That's why it's important to pharmaceutical companies for Germany to remain the most expensive country. They want to keep prices in Germany artificially high so they can benefit from that price globally. That's the core problem. And that's the problem Health Minister Philipp Rössler wants to solve. He says he's optimistic despite resistance from the industry. Ich glaube schon, I do believe it's possible to find the right balance between the market's ability to innovate on the one side and fair competition in pricing on the other. Rössler says it's important to get drug prices under control, but the powerful pharmaceuticals industry has frustrated many previous attempts at reform.